What's going on everybody, it's Adrian. And today I'm gonna to be talking about a little something a little controversial. And I don't wanna be catching no hate mail from some of you, you YouTubers out here because I'm spoiling something for you. So you're gonna to have to wait until the end to figure out what exactly I'm talking about. But for now, let's get into it. that I am talking about today is none other than I featured in my top five that I, per that I personally like, and that is Dior Sauvage Elixir. So in case y'all don't know, it says Sauvage. It is not Savage, it is Sauvage. And when you pronounce this, it looks like Elixir, but they want you to say Elixir. So Sauvage Elixir. So the presentation on this, it looks like a little trophy. Uh, some of these higher end fragrances are actually doing this now. Um, and it, it's like a nice, decent presentation. It's like, oh, ta-da, look at me. So if you've seen a Dior uh, bottle before of Sauvage, it looks very reminiscent. You got the same type of design, label and stuff like that. Now, the big deal with Elixir is the fact that there are several Dior's. Um, there was the OG, which came out a long time, well, not a long time ago, back in 2015, and is immediately recognizable with the Johnny Depp image on it. So when you think of Sauvage, you think of Johnny Depp and that whole line, and you tend to think of Pirates of the Caribbean. Not sure I deserve that. Because that's the type of the smell what they were going for. That's what you would kind of expect coming off of that bottle. So there is the EDT, there is the uh, EDP, the Eau de Parfum, and there's their Parfum, and then now there is the Elixir. Right here in the opening presentation, the cap is very good. See, it clicks into place, very heavy duty. I like the fact they have continued with the same style bottle and it's very dark, it kind of protects the 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 oils and the, the chemicals that are in here, the juice that's actually inside the bottle. Uh, the atomizer is very, very good. It's kind of pressure sensitive. When it sprays, it is a very thick spray. I'm gonna spray it out. As you can see, it's very, and I only did like a half a spray. So like it is projecting very, very well. And again, I have sprayed this on my skin. When I first bought this, I bought, I checked it out in Sephora and I sprayed some on my hand, just a little bit like this, not even a full spray, a half a spray. And I was like, wow, that's actually got a good sheen to it. It's got a little bit of a shine. That shine stayed there on my hand, I kid you not, for hours, hours. And this is beast mode in, whew, Man, that smell is just filling the room, filling the room here. I'm getting that fragrance that is just powerful and it just grabs your attention. It grabs your nose and it just won't let go. This is an attention grabber. This is a compliment getter. And it, it's something I believe that you should have in your lineup. Any of the Dior Sauvages, they are definitely one of the top produced colognes out there. Uh, but the reason why I'm gonna catch a little bit of heat on this one is the elixir. I'm gonna go ahead and say it now. I don't believe they're the same thing. I think this is a different product and I'm gonna show it to you why. So I made this little list of the note breakdown, okay? So everybody says, oh yeah, I can smell the Dior DNA in here. Of course, I can too. I can smell the Dior DNA, faintly. So the Dior Sauvage original is the top notes are Calambrian, bergamot, and pepper. The mid are Szechuan pepper, lavender, which is still prevalent here, pink pepper, vetiver, patchouli, geranium, and elmi. I don't even know what elmi is. I'm not gonna lie, I don't know what that is. And then the base is ambroxan. That's why they said Sauvage is a an ambroxan bomb because it is, it has ambroxan in it and it projects like a beast and it does create an aura around you. Your smell, your sillage is going to project very far, especially with elixir. I recommend do not spray too much on this. 
test it out with a single spray, maybe two sprays. If you're used to putting on four and five and six sprays, people are going to hate you because it is powerful. Like Jeremy Franklin say, there's power. Like this stuff is crazy. And the lasting power, the staying power, the endurance is incredible. I washed my hand, I kid you not, that day five to six times, like scrubbing my hand. I woke up the very next day, rolled over on my hand, smell it, it was still present. Now, not like, whoa, in your face, but it was still present. So like staying power on this, you're not gonna have an issue whatsoever. This is potentially a 24 hour or longer. If you get this on your clothing, it's going to follow that shirt or anything for a while. So if you're one of these people that like to spray up your clothes and stuff like that, just know the next time, if you're not gonna put that in the laundry and put it away and stuff like that, because I know we all have done it, don't fake it. I know, I see you, I see you looking, and you're looking at your boy over there right now. You do it too, stop it. So when you put that shirt back on, don't lace it up with anything else. Make sure you smell it, because there's a good possibility, even if three to four days later, you're gonna smell it on that shirt. Possibly even a week later, it's gonna be there. This stuff is powerful. It is predominantly just essential oils in here. Now, the reason why I'm gonna catch eight on this video is because I read you the notes on there. As you can see, horrible chicken scratch handwriting, but the elixir ingredient breakdown is top is cinnamon, nutmeg, cardamom, and grapefruit. The middle notes, lavender, which again, lavender is the only note that, is, that I found in here that is still from the original fragrance line. And then the base notes is licorice, sandalwood, amber, patchouli, and Haitian leather. None of those ingredients match up. So to me, to say this is Sauvage is a lie. And what I'm gonna tell you is exactly this. These are the ingredients. Get out of here with that nonsense. This is a completely different fragrance. That's why this is being low key. It got hype, it got trained, and then people were like, man, I don't wanna hype this up too much because it is good. If the original Dior, Dior Sauvage was perceived as Pirates of the Caribbean and Johnny Depp and being on that boat and, and smelling the bourbon and smelling all these powerful smells, then this, is the new Batman. This is Batman and Catwoman. They got into a fight and they're sitting there throwing down at each other. And all of a sudden, midway through the fight, they stop and they look at each other and like, you look good. You look good. So trying to go smash? That's what this smell is. This is a sexual powerhouse. To me, that's what I perceive it as. It is not the original Dior Sauvage. And again, I know that people are gonna say, you're not right, you're not listening to what, what they were doing with the DNA and structure like that. Cool, whatever. I respect your opinion, but I'm looking at strictly the ingredient labels and there's only one thing that matches up, lavender. That's like saying any fragrance with lavender as the middle note is the same as any other fragrance. It's not. This was sneaky low key by Dior. I respect you guys for doing that because y'all put this in there, snuck it in low key, and I think it's gonna fly undercover for a little while longer because people are just gonna say, oh, look, it's another Sauvage. It's a money grab, it's a money grab. Oh, they came out with the EDT, then they did the Eau de Parfum, and then they did the Parfum. This is just another release. They didn't bother to look at the ingredient list and they didn't bother to actually smell this thing. This thing is phenomenal. I really, really, truly enjoy this. And again, I am not gonna tell you to go and blind buy this because just like anything else, you don't like the same stuff as I like. I don't like the same stuff as you like. We probably don't even eat the same foods all the time. But this being said, I think this is a low key release of a slightly new fragrance and they just didn't tout it as much. Now it is a little bit higher of a ticket item. Uh, you can pick this up from retailers for about $155, $160 a bottle. Um, I picked this up on a little bit of a sale, nothing too crazy. Shaved off about 20 bucks, but hey, 20 bucks back in my pocket. 
I'm appreciating that. So this is something I do recommend. Like I said, this is part of my top five. And I would say, if you haven't already smelled it, do yourself a favor, hit a retailer, pick up the two bottles side by side, smell the EDT and smell the Eau de Parfum. And then you tell me if you think they're exactly the same thing, because I'm gonna tell you right now, you get out of here with that. I don't believe it for a single bit, but hey, if you like it, that's on you. I like this one a lot. This is gonna stay in my rotation for quite some time, simply for the fact I don't need to put on one spray and then it just carries through. If I put on two sprays, I'm guaranteed a 24 hour period of time versus some of these other fragrances out here. I'm gonna have to put on five, six, sometimes seven sprays to get me even anywhere near 12 hours. This is two and done. For two, for the, for the 60 milliliters that this is, yeah, I know it's 155 bucks. Hey, think about it like this. If you only gotta put two and you're putting five on the other one, you're basically getting what? 140, 150 mil bottle? Sounds like a deal to me. So, hey, I appreciate you guys' time. And as always, I'll talk to you a little bit later.